and welcome to another segment of Bella TV. I am your host, Jennifer, and today I am joined by the lovely Jennifer Sears, who you may recognize from the OWN Network's hit TV show, Greenleaf. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you for being our guest today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Of course. So I always like to take it back to the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Anytime you talk to an actress, especially, I love hearing how you got into acting. And I have to point out um, that you were raised in New Jersey. Yes. I'm a Jersey girl. We have our Bella offices here in Jersey. So oh. we always love meeting and interviewing a Jersey girl. So go ahead and get started. Tell us how you got started in acting. Well, um, as you said, I am from New Jersey. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey, uh, which is where my roots are from. Um, we migrated to Dublin, Georgia. Quite a, a, a difference. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> difference. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, went to uh, middle school and high school in Dublin, Georgia. Left Dublin, Georgia. Um, moved to Atlanta by myself, solo dolo. Um, moved to Atlanta, attended Clark Atlanta University, is where I studied uh, political science. Um, I actually did not have a background in theater. Um, so unlike a lot of actors who study theater art, um, have a BFA in theater, um, I did not have that background. Um, so the career path is a little unconventional, um, but it's definitely, I can see where it's come full circle. Um, it's just mind blowing. Sometimes I, I sit back and I'm like, okay, God, I see what you're doing here. I'm where um, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Be right. Um, I studied um, political science. I had um, ambitions to actually practice, um, go into the field of law and actually practice entertainment law. Right. So you see the entertainment like connection. <laughs> it wasn't until after um, graduating college that I kind of felt like there was a pull to something else. And I was just like, I don't really feel passionate about law. Like who wants to practice other than lawyers, you know, kudos to all our lawyers out there. We need you. A lot of um, the lawyers don't even like practicing law. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had a who said, you know, you don't quite fit the whole law mold. Like you seem very theatrical. I feel like you should be doing something in the arts. And I'm like, it's funny you should say that because <laughs> I actually wanted to, um, to be an actor. Um, and I just didn't know the right, the right steps to take and you know how do you break into the industry i have people asking me this all the time how do you break into the industry and i say hey listen like my path my um my journey is unlike anyone else's you know what i mean you just got to kind of find your path and stay stay true to it mm -hmm. so it was it wasn't until after i graduated college that um like i said i felt this yearning for something more something more dedicated to the arts. Um, I have a background in, um, in, in poetry, writing poetry, spoken word. I was a creative writer. So I thought maybe I can get into writing, you know, maybe I'll be an author, but I still felt this theat theatrical pull to want to, you know, pursue the arts, um, drama. And so um, after I got um, left, uh, graduated from college is when I was pre presented the opportunity to audition for a role. Now, mind you, um, Jen, I did not, do you mind if I call you Jen? Yeah, of course, please. Okay, good. Because I go by, <laughs> I just immediately think, Jen. Perfect. Um, but I, I kid you that I kid you not. Like I did not have, I didn't have a headshot. I didn't have acting credits. I didn't have um, drama school to fall back on. I was just presented this role and say, hey, I think you'd be great for this role. So I show up, no headshot, no resume, nothing in hand, and um, <laughs> I show up on the lot and I look around in the waiting room. Um, because it was an open call. It wasn't like, you know, um, audition slots. Uh, it was an open call. Come one, come all. If you think you can fit this role, come. So I find myself in a role, in a, in a room uh, full of women, beautiful women. Now, I don't think I'm, you know, but ugly, but um, <laughs> women are just like gorgeous. I'm talking a lot. The pressure's on. You're feeling it. Yeah, the pressure's on. Um, and so I, I see no one looks like me. You know, the short hair, you know, kind of socially awkward, a little geeky. <laughs> and so um, I just walked in with confidence. I was like, you know, okay, I'm just here to have fun. Let's just see what happens. And they reach out and they're saying, you know, do you have a headshot? Do you have a resume? And I'm like, nope. And so they say, well, we're going to just send her down for Polaroids. And yes, Polaroid pictures, you can tell how old the story is. <laughs> and, uh, 
I come back upstairs with my Polaroid picture, just proudly waving my Polaroid picture, and they take a look and say, okay, let's see what you got. I auditioned for them, um, and they loved it. Before I left the lot, they called my cell phone and said, we want to give you that role. And that role ended up being the box office directorial debut of Tyler Perry and Medea's Family Reunion. And ever since then, it's just been skyrocket. Like, my mind has been blown by some of the projects that I've been blessed to work on. I mean, that speaks so much to your God-given talent because, oh, I mean, you don't have, you know, the classical, you know, background like most people do, like you said, but you walked in there with confidence knowing that, you know, this is what I, this is what my passion is. I want to be here. I'm meant to be yeah. here. And you got it. So kudos to you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> of, course, of course. So from that moment to let's talk about now. So you're coming okay. into, you came into Greenleaf fifth and final season, which yes. I'm sure would be maybe intimidating, but maybe also exciting, like a challenge. I mean, and it's on the own network. Hello. Like if you're going to be anywhere. <laughs> oh, for free. Like, oh, yes. so <laughs> what was that moment like getting that role? And then what was it like, you know, stepping into an already established uh, mm -hmm. cast and family, I guess you could say, and, you right. know, breathing life into this character. Right. It was, um, to be honest with you, I, 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 it happened so fast, so suddenly and so powerfully that it was like shock waves. Um, the, the role that I auditioned for, I was under the impression it was just a co-star. So, you know, I would show up for one scene, one episode and be done. And I was just like, okay, well, I can relate to this girl. You know, she, she's, She's a younger sister um, of the world-renowned, infamous Rochelle Cross, played by the beautiful and stunning Latoya Luckett Walker. Um, she is kind of always living in her sister's shadow, um, but she's different. So she's trying to make her own, have her own presence, have her own voice. And I, I felt that in a sense of, like you said, Greenleaf, four seasons already established, already, already successful, already with a huge fan base, dedicated, devoted fan base. And I kind of felt the pressure, like, I don't want to mess this up. You know, these people are so, you know, they have such a strong following. The, the, the fans, the Greenleaf fans are just, and I don't even consider them fans. It's like extended family members of the Greenleaf family. So they're very, prote very protective of this, um, this culture. Um, and, and so I came into it with, okay, I'm just going to make the, pre the, the impression that I, the best impression I can make for this one episode. And I show up and, um, the, um, executive producer, Clement Virgo goes, it's, it's uncanny how much you look like Rochelle. You look just like your sister. And, uh, that's before we even, you know, um, completed one scene. So as I start to you know, we go through rehearsals and we start, we start taping and they hear my voice and my cadence and they say, you sound like her. This is crazy. And so that one episode stretched out to two, to three, to four. And then I was on, um, I've been blessed and fortunate to be on six of the eight episodes of this final season. So it's just, like I said, it happened so fast, so suddenly. And it like, it was just literally like shockwaves and everyone's like, who is this Tara James? Who, do we trust her? I don't know. Do you trust her? I don't know. <laughs> just to watch everyone's reaction and how they receive Tara or not, um, no judgment, <laughs> um, you know, just to see how everyone within this Greenleaf following have embraced this new character in the final season. Like I said, I have, have I felt a little bit of pressure. Like I don't want to mess this up. Like they've, I, I felt the pressure to, um, to impress myself, my family, my friends, but also um, to make the, the Greenleaf cast and crew, the production team very proud because they've worked very hard all four seasons. And I didn't want to be the one that's like, you know, that fifth season was great, but that Tara James, we could have did without her. Like, <laughs> well, it seems like you have a knack for coming into these situations where, you know, maybe I'll get it, I'm not really sure, but then you yeah. nail it and then you end up killing it. So you're obviously doing something right. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. With uh, Medea and then now with Greenleaf. Yeah. And it's just, it's a blessing to have been able to make the cut, right? Like the, fi the final season. And um, I, I, like I said, I was under the impression it would just be one episode and it ended up being six. And um, 
it's just been incredible. I mean, Miss Lynn Whitfield being comparable Miss Lynn Whitfield and uh, the stoic and almost regal Keith David and yeah. Lamont Ruff. Dandridge and you know Deborah Joy Winans everyone has been, has been just so incredibly warm and welcoming I cannot like it just still blows my mind like I'm working with these people who I've watched and fanned out over and now I'm counted as a part of the family you know so and so Greenleaf made such history you know this this show has made such history and I'm I'm just so blessed and honored to be a part of it that's amazing so you touched on, you know, fanning out about your, your castmates. And mm -hmm. I always like to talk about exciting projects you have coming up, things you have in the works, things you could talk about. And I'm sure you have plenty. But <laughs> one of the things that I want to talk about is that you are doing the sequel to yes. one of the most iconic movies ever made, Coming to America. First of all, I didn't even know there was a sequel. So super exciting. But I mean... Mm -hmm. What is that like? Not only landing that role, but starring in a movie alongside, I mean, Eddie Murphy, hello. Like, do you get more right. iconic in comedy than that? And I read that that is the movie that made you want to get into acting. It's Absolutely. like full, full circle. What is that like? Yes. And that was exactly what I was saying, like how, like I take a step back and I'm like, God, how did I end up here? And I can see like the little breadcrumbs where he left breadcrumbs in my life, you know, um, coming to America being the, the movie that, that shook me. My little six-year-old soul <laughs> was like, this is what I want to do. Um, because just to watch Eddie Murphy, the, the iconic Eddie Murphy portray four characters in one film and okay. each character is distinct from, from the other. And you, it's, it's almost as though he disappears. He just, be, he, he, Eddie goes away and each four, all four of these characters just come to life. And I was just like, this man is a magician. <laughs> like, you know? um, and the same for Arsenio Hall. He, he kept me laughing so hard on set to where like we became like so, so close. I just felt like, you know, have you ever met someone you feel like, I feel like I know, I've known you somewhere. Okay. Oh, yeah, so and it um, makes for such great on screen chemistry. Too. Exactly. exactly. And the fact that again, with the whole warmth and welcoming vibe and energy, these are iconic giants, and they just welcomed me onto set, you know, little me, <laughs> even though I have uh, 15 years in the industry, I still see myself as a baby in the industry, because there's so much I want to do. There's so much um, I feel there's out there, you know, awaiting me. So I was just so humbled, the fact that these iconic giants just welcomed me and said, you know, let's have fun. Let's, let's laugh. Let's try to make each other laugh. And so for that to happen, it was just, you know, um, it was just my silly, goofy, giddy self. Like, I was just like on a playground, like, oh, we can <laughs> Like, wild out, let's do it. So, it's probably um, fun to go to work every day when you're working oh with those kind of people. I mean, I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in between takes, um, the downtime between takes while they were resetting uh, the set was just, I mean, nonstop laughter. Nonstop laughter. And they are just, it's just mind-blowing how talented they are. Like, seriously. Like, I was just sitting there, like, my six-year-old inner child just watching these incredible people who I've watched my favorite film of all time coming to America. And now here I am coming full circle and just watching them right before my eyes, like creating the sequel. And I'm a part of it. Like, well, how, I'm how, very how much excited for the sequel. That's yes. later this year. Yes. December, I believe December 18th, praying that, you know, we still stay on time, uh, the release date with all this going on. Um, so, but yeah, later on this year, December. So exciting. I'm sure you're beyond looking forward to that. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to how everyone is going to laugh their butts off. I mean, the original was already packed with so much talent, but now we have, you know, you throw in Leslie Jones and you have Tracy Morgan and you have Lunell, the, 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 the it, hilarious comedian, Lunell. She is just, she's just incredible. I mean, her, her, Comedic timing and the things that come out of her mouth. <laughs> you just, you're fine to not laugh and mess up a good take. So it was just a challenge every take to not laugh. 
I think it'll be so cool to see it too. I mean, what was it, 1988? So 1988. All these years later, finally getting a sequel. That's so exciting. Right, right, right. Yeah, totally. It's just, I'm just, ah, uh, I'm like pinching myself still. Well, I know you are obviously super busy with everything you have going on, but you also do uh, philanthropic work as well. And one of the things um, that we always talk about at Bella, um, our tagline is life is beautiful. And we mm -hmm. always highlight the ideal of, you know, the beauty of giving back. So yeah. in your crazy busy schedule, you're taking off skyrocketing. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about some of the things that you do outside of acting as well. Well, outside of acting, um, staying within the same vein as Greenleaf um, Ministry and channeling back again, the show that my life really is kind of coming full circle with Tara James. Um, her path is working within the community, for the community, doing great mission work um, at her church, uh, the, 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 the ministerial uh, work that she does. I myself, I'm very involved in my church my home church here in Atlanta, Georgia, um, Ray of Hope Christian Church, we do a lot of um, community outreach. Uh, we feed the homeless, uh, we go and um, we do a lot of mentor programs uh, for um, at-risk youth. So I really have a, um, a, a bleeding heart for our children. I, I just, I, they are our future. I hate to sound cliche, but they truly are. And they're, they're having to face a lot more challenges and, str and, and pressures and struggles that we didn't have to go through, um, you know. And so I'm constantly uplifting, upbuilding um, the, the, the inner child, um, not just within myself, by, um, you know, just giving from the, the, the place where I was as, you know, a child, socially awkward, not really finding my voice until much later in life. And there are a lot of children who are, you know, they're, they're going through the pressures of trying to look perfect in a social media age um, on top of everything else that they're having to deal with. So I, I really, really love to um, participate in mentor programs. Um, I go to Haiti. Um, I typically go every year, but with uh, COVID and everything, uh, I, I, and then also with my hectic schedule with filming and everything, um, this year has been a bit, of a bit of a challenge to get back there, but I have um, four sponsored daughters there that I've been sponsoring for the past um, seven, eight years. Um, the youngest that I started sponsoring was four, and uh, she is actually about to turn 12, I think. So um, the oldest is in college now, and they're constantly reaching out and saying, we miss you, when are you gonna come back and see us? Um, but yeah, working with children is very near and dear to my heart. Um, but the nonprofit organization that I travel to Haiti with is called Restore Haiti. They're based in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. Um, the, sponsorship, the sponsorship program that I participate in, uh, it takes care of their school, um, their meals. They're able to get three, sometimes maybe five meals a day. Um, there's no public school, no free public school down, down in Haiti. So if a child isn't sponsored, um, they don't get a chance to be educated. So it's important to me to give back to the children, not just here in the States, but also abroad, um, primarily Haiti, because again, my life coming full circle, my senior thesis in college was based on um, the United States foreign relations between Haiti and Cuba and the political asylum seeking refugees in Haiti who were trying to flee um, a, a, di a dictatorship to come to the United States for freedom. Um, and so that, my, my research um, in uh, my political science field and background really, really opened my heart and my mind up to Haiti. So once I got older and I was able to, to do some mission work, Haiti was one of the, the, the main spots that I wanted to travel to and feel the soil, um, engage with the people and, and the culture. And they're such strong, resilient, beautiful, giving people because it, as, as, very little that they have, they have so much to give. They have so much to, to, um, to pour into others who come to help them. Uh, so that is just, as much as I give, I feel as though I'm giving to them, they give back to me and so much, so much more. So yeah, I've been going to Haiti ever since the earthquake in 2010 and I'm looking forward to getting back. Wow, that's so beautiful. I mean, not only do you, are you, skyrocketing right now in, in the acting world, but the way that you give back and how passionate you are about it, that's beautiful. So truly, truly amazing. Kudos to you. That's
That's great. So I know people are excited to, to watch Greenleaf, to mm -hmm. hear more about the movies and the projects that you have coming up, or even people that maybe want to get involved and follow in your footsteps with this initiative in Haiti. So where mm -hmm. can people watch, stream, follow you, get more information? Tell us where we can learn more. Well, I am, I try to be, I'm trying to get a little bit more active in social media, but gotcha. <laughs> so clearly than I was before. And people, you know, just like, are we going to have to wait in those six months before a post? Um, but I'm doing much better now. Um, but they can follow me um, on Instagram at I am Jen Sears, Twitter at I am Jen Sears, and Facebook Jennifer Sears. So those are my, you know, Amazing. that's right. <laughs> Awesome. It was so great getting to know you a little bit more, a Jersey girl and someone who I'm sure we are all going to be seeing a lot more of. So thank you so much for joining us on Bella, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Send me calzones and pizza. I miss Jersey. <laughs> oh my God, I will. A hundred percent. What What else is the big Jersey thing you miss now that you're done in Jersey? Oh, White Castle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything. As soon as I go back home to Jersey, my aunt, she picks me up from the airport and I'm, she's like, I already know. White Castle, Torpedo Base, Pizza, Broadway. Like, So we're eat I'm like, of like just this glutton just eating it all in one day so no i have family that comes back and the first thing they want to do they have a, a spot or a type of food that they have to have that's so oh great. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right once again thank you so much jennifer it's been a pleasure thank you so much jennifer it's great meeting you of course